when I see coaching, when I see rules changes, I always wonder what's going through coaches' minds because it seems as if we try to tweak the rules each and every year, whether it's targeting, whether it's speeding up time of play or whatever the case may be. Now, in this case, it's uh, running the clock after a first down and an incomplete pass, except for the final two minutes. So it feels a lot like the NFL, uh, their model and how they handled the clock. So, Caleb, initially, let me begin. What do you think, just in college football, then we'll get to how it affects Tennessee, what do you think of these potential changes? So not as far as it affects Tennessee, but in terms of overall – I'm not crazy about most of them. And the reason I'm not crazy about most of them is that, okay, let's just start with the whole first down clock runs, except for two minutes. I don't like it in the NFL. I don't like it in college. I don't like where you change a rule based on the time of the game. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Now the argument is Caleb, they are changing the game to limit exposure and potential injury to athletes, especially now that they have a college football playoff, a 12-team playoff that will be in effect next year. Not this season, but next season. So you're not buying that, right? No, because if they were doing that, why would they do the two-minute thing? Why wouldn't they just keep the clock running on first down every time they – regardless? Well, I'm glad we got that out of the way because I'm not buying it either. This is about fitting TV time slots. Continue, sir. Yes, exactly. So I think this is this has everything to do with fitting TV time slots. If you wanted to – First of all, why don't they just adopt the NFL rules? Okay, I'm talking about first down, uh, the clock runs, then you just get an extra timeout, which is the two-minute warning. I'm fine with that. I do like the consecutive timeouts. Now, I, I hope that doesn't mean you can't use timeouts on back-to-back -back plays. You should be able to do that, but I don't think you should be able to use two timeouts on one play. I actually agree with that because I think it's ridiculous when teams use have two timeouts and they use both of them to ice the kicker <laughs> in a game. I, I don't I think that should be taken away altogether, the icing the kicker thing. I think that's just stupid and it draws out the end of the game. And I don't know that it really helps. Maybe we'll get a kicker on to discuss that at some point. I can call James Wilhoyt. I just don't believe that really affects a kicker. I think if you did the odds over time, if a guy's gonna make it, he's gonna make it. I hate the icing the kicker just in general. Always have. I agree, but there's no rule to stop. Like you can't tell a team they can't use a timeout. You know I mean? know, I know. But if you could, I would. <laughs> so, well, the consecutive timeouts I'm fine with because I've seen consecutive timeouts used to uh, ice the kicker, um, and I have a problem with that. Um, I would say that – By the way, that's a, by the way, that's a sign of a coach who didn't use his timeouts earlier and should have. But anyway, go ahead. That's probably true. You're right. I mean, well, there's another one I would never forget uh, – you know, I used to think James Franklin was a good coach, but James Franklin used two timeouts to call a fourth down play one time. Yep. And because he used both of them and he didn't get the fourth down, Ohio State was able to run the clock out when they got the ball back in a Penn State Ohio State game. And I'm like, you know, that was, and by the way, the clock had stopped. If he had all, he didn't need a timeout. That's my pet peeve too. When coaches take a timeout to talk about a play, when you might need that timeout if you don't get the play converted, I think that's, that, that's, that is proof when you know a coach is not very bright when they do something like that. Report um, game management, you see that a lot out of rookies, but you shouldn't see it out of a guy that's been coaching for right at two decades. Uh, so so continue with the changes. Yeah, so I'm not so I'm okay with the timeouts. I'm not crazy with the out of that with the um first down clock running within two minutes. Either keep it as it is or do the NFL rule where the first down the clock runs no matter what, and then you just get a two minute warning. Um the incomplete pass one is the one that I don't really mind. I get it because let's be honest, 90% of the time, 95% of the time, a team, the team that is trying to run the clock is not going to be throwing the ball anyway. Does that make sense? If you're trying, if you're yes. throwing the, and, and so I think that actually opens up a little more creativity from offenses that are trying to run the clock out. And most of the time, you know, I've covered enough football to, to see that, the, again, the clock doesn't keep running if the pass is incomplete. It keeps running after the ball is spotted. Most teams usually have a play ready to go after the ball is spotted. I'm sorry. I'm okay with that because I get really annoyed when after an incomplete pass, teams still milk the 40-second play clock. I'm like, are you serious, guys? You didn't really have a play ready to go at this point? And so I actually don't mind that one at all. Well, 
I, I, I don't want anything to change. I was thinking just this past year, coincidentally, I was watching an NFL game and I thought to myself, I, w- I wish they, or I was watching a college game and they were coming back from you know, like 20 points. So it mattered in the middle of the fourth quarter that they were getting the clock stopped on incomplete passes. So I don't want to see either of them change. Uh, running the clock uh, after first down would save about seven plays based off uh, Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports. An incomplete pass would uh, cut out about, say, save, cut out about seven plays, cut out about 20 plays. Travis says, I'm going to use my timeouts how I see fit. They should just leave the game alone, maybe cut out the commercials instead. Well, that's what this is all about. And I'll go ahead and tell you, Division Two or the FCS level, whatever you want to call it, they're totally against this. Why? Because they don't have as much commercial inventory that they have to clear, and their games are three hours or less. Whereas at the FBS level, they've got commercial inventory that, that they want to clear. Portions of the program brought to you by City Heated and Air Conditioning, cityheatandair.com. You might need a new unit. If you do, you know, with City Heating and Air Conditioning, that it's not just a case where another part might have fixed it or some Freon. City heating and air conditioning integrity matters over over 50 years in Knoxville. Does let's say all these go through, okay? Just for the sake of argument. Help or hurt the Vols. You've got to call them up on off the hook sports. Help or hurt the Vols. Minusculely, I don't know if that's a word, but minimally. Minimally helps the Vols. The one that minimally helps the Vols is the incomplete pass, the clock runs on the spotted ball. The reason that helps the Vols, I I say sometimes your biggest advantage is other teams' disadvantages. Tennessee's a team that doesn't really need the clock to stop that much with their offense because they run so fast. I mean, they're ready to snap the ball when the ball is spotted anyway, usually. So who cares if the clock starts on an incomplete pass? That causes a lot of problems for a Jimbo Fisher who loves to call the, who loves to call every play from the sideline, you know, loves to huddle and call the play. Doesn't cause any problems for Tennessee. So I think in that one really helps the balls. But you're still going to have to you're still going to have to spot the ball. I mean, you're still going to have to have an official that's spotting the ball and is making sure both teams line up. It's just the difference is the clock's going to run. Well, uh, the clock's going to stop Remember, the clock stops on on um, uh, on uh, inc- on incomplete passes. The clock stops until they spot the ball. Right, but in this particular case, it's going to when when is the when is the clock going to stop as you see it? Uh, at, at an incomplete pass, if you throw an incomplete pass, the clock's going to stop, and then the ball is going to be spotted, and then it starts to run again. Usually, by the time the ball's spotted, Tennessee's ready to snap it anyway. Like, they're almost always ready to snap it anyway. Now, as far as the first down rule, yes, that would hurt their, that would hurt things like some of their two minute drives, but it doesn't affect two minute drives because Tennessee, again, they stopped the clock still on first downs with, um, with, within two minutes. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was going to say they, they stopped, they stopped the clock. That that was all I was going to say. They stopped the clock within two minutes. Travis says hurts them. Um, we would have lost to Alabama with these rules. Now, in the final two minutes, Travis, keep in mind, and you're right, in the final two minutes that, that these, the, the old rules or the current rules would still be in effect. Travis says our game's lightning fast as it is. Yeah, I'm, I, I think it would actually hurt Tennessee, and I'm going to take it from a completely different angle, Caleb. I think it hurts Tennessee from volume of plays. If you... If you take out seven and 20 plays, which would be the first downs and incomplete passes respectively, then that's fewer plays that Tennessee's out there running around and wearing down a defense. So while the actual drive may be the same amount, the overall cumulative effect, I believe firmly, would make it more manageable for opposing defenses to keep up with Tennessee over time as opposed to wearing down. So I think it actually hurts Tennessee from that perspective. You know, the way I've watched Josh Heupel's offense the last two years, though, this idea that he wears defenses down with what he's doing, it it doesn't bear out with his scoring. Last year, Heupel's best quarter was the second quarter. 
the year before it was the first quarter. As a matter of fact, uh, Tennessee was the best first quarter team in football uh, to his first year. Heupel's whole mantra is just score fast. I don't really think it's about wearing a defense down. I think it's scoring fast. And I've heard kind of Heupel say, like, he's not happy if he doesn't score within six plays, quite honestly. And you're not really wearing down a defense if you're scoring within six plays. And so I, I, I don't think that's – I don't think the wearing down the defense has ever been a really a focus of Heupel's. Man, I don't know. I would like to talk to some of those defensive players and how they felt in the fourth quarter. You're right. There's a wearing down through a drive, but I believe, I think more so than you, that there's a wearing down through the game. And that's a benefit to uh, Tennessee. And I, but um, ultimately, the speed of the game and catching people off guard, like you said, minimally, is it might help, but it's not going to be a huge impact because they're going to catch teams off guard anyway. <laughs> 